Hey everybody, today we are going to talk velocity. So if I were to run a mile and you were to run a mile, but you finished your mile in a shorter amount of time, how might we describe your motion? Well, we would probably say you were moving faster or you had a higher speed. So what is speed anyway? Let's think about that for a second. When you tell somebody how fast you're going, you usually say something like, oh, I was going 60 miles per hour. Uh, 60 mph or however you put it uh, and thinking about that literally you're literally saying that for every hour that goes by you travel 60 miles and so if you travel for an hour you've gone 60 miles of distance if you travel for two hours you go another 60 miles or 120 miles of distance um, and so you're just telling somebody how far you went and how long it took now if your speed is greater that could mean that if we move for the same amount of time you're going to travel farther than i do if you, we travel the same distance, you're going to do so in a shorter amount of time, in less time. I can show this with these carts. If I move both carts for the same amount of time, but I move the blue cart faster, then it will travel farther than the red cart. If I move both carts the same distance, and I move the blue cart faster again, then the blue cart will reach the end in less time than the red cart. So speed will tell you how much distance changed or how much distance was traveled for every unit of time. But we don't know where, we don't have a direction. And that's where different types of values come into play. So speed is an example of a scalar value and scalar values give us just one piece of information. They give you a magnitude or a how much. 50 miles only tells us how far, it doesn't tell us where. So distance and speed are both examples of scalar values. Now there are types of values that give you two pieces of information, and those are vector values. So vector values not only tell you how much, or you know, that magnitude, but they also tell you in what direction. And that's really key when it comes to things like velocity or position. Position and velocity are vector values. So for example, 50 miles forward not only tells you how far, but it also gives you a where as well. So let's look at velocity. Velocity is how much position changes by divided by how long it takes for position to change. In other words, how much does position change every unit of time? See if this example helps. The person standing at the top of the screen will move at two meters per second, and the person standing at the bottom of the screen will move at three meters per second. Velocity tells us how much position will change each second. The person with a velocity of 3 meters per second will move 3 meters each second. And the person with a velocity of 2 meters per second will move 2 meters each second. Now position contains a direction, it's a vector value, and so that means velocity also includes a direction as well. Uh, and so when we refer to velocity we can uh, use a v, a lowercase v to represent that, and we would say velocity is equal to d over t. Now d typically stands for distance, and I know that's not position. In this class in particular we only work in one dimension, so one dimensional motion either left, right, up or down, uh, forward or backwards, and so any change in position is going to be linear, just you know either forward that much or backwards this much, and so we can use distance in this case uh, to calculate velocity. So velocity is equal to distance over time, um, how far you traveled divided by how long it took you to travel there. Uh, and so examples of units would be a unit of distance divided by a unit of time, so meters divided by seconds, or miles divided by hours, or kilometers divided by hours. Now typically when we refer to these units we say meters per second, or miles per hour, or kilometers per hour. And so it's important to note that when we say per, that's like saying divided by. And so uh, miles divided by hours is miles per hour, or meters divided by seconds is meters per second. Now, if I want to write these in numbers, I could say three meters per second forward. I could say negative two meters per second. And you might be caught off guard when you see the negative. Why? What, what's a negative for? Well, in physics, we use positive and negative uh, symbols to indicate the direction. So the example here on the screen, I have two lines here representing five meters. If I wanted to give a direction as well, I could draw arrows. I need to indicate that with the numbers too. And so in this case, I'll use a plus for rightward, and I can use a negative for leftward. And so by using positive and negative as directional components, I can include the direction as part of the number. Now positive and negative are relative. It all depends on whoever is setting up that frame of reference and the direction. So I might tell you that positive is rightward or positive is upward. 
positive might be downwards. It all depends on who sets up the frame of reference. So a little quiz here, if Steve runs positive five meters per second, Jimbo runs negative five meters per second, who runs faster? Well, in this case, they're both traveling at the same speed, just in different directions. So they have different velocities. Positive five meters means five meters per second one way, negative five meters per second is five meters per second the other way. So same speed or magnitude component, um, but different directions. In our next example, Mr. McGarry is traveling at negative five meters per second. Ms. Christman is traveling at negative six meters per second. Mr. White is traveling at positive three meters per second. Who finishes their mile first? Well, if you guessed that Miss Chrisman finished her mile first, then you are correct. So again, looking at that magnitude component, um, that's telling us how fast uh, Miss Chrisman is traveling at six meters per second. Uh, and in this case, Mr. White seems to be the only one traveling in the wrong direction. I don't know why. So really important to note from that last example, um, they have the same speeds, but they have different velocities. Okay, so speed and velocity are similar, but they're not exactly the same because velocity has that added direction component. And so you can have two things moving the exact same speed traveling in different directions. So in that example there, they may be traveling at the same speed, but they have uh, different directions and therefore different velocities. All right, well, I hope that helped with velocity. If you have any further questions, please make sure to ask and get that extra help. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.